Welcome to episode 52 of the Moon Experience podcast. On today's show, I am really excited uh, to have uh, not just an amazing player, but uh, an amazing competitor. Welcome, uh, Neiman, aka Neem, uh, to the podcast. Uh, I know Neiman, ah. uh, and 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 your dog here, and you, you want to. This is Rocco. Him. What up, Rocco? This so, is what up, Rocco? Yeah. <laughs> And so, uh, Neiman, let's uh, get right to it. Um, yep. You know, uh, obviously, I want to get into kind of like your history and how you discovered the game. Uh, but let's talk about the Jazzy finale because uh, you finished uh, third place uh, at the Jazzy's uh, uh, season two finale invitational. And so, uh, first off, thank you for uh, accepting uh, the league's invitation uh, to compete. Uh, and you really showed out, man. You you really showed out, and so uh, you know, congratulations on your third place finish. I know, knowing the competitor you are, you definitely wanted to take it all. Uh, but just you know, just just being able to finish in that top three and to kind of mention your name alongside names like Issei and Five Star, uh, that was uh, quite an accomplishment. And, uh, you definitely should be proud of that. But uh, what are your what were your Thank thoughts you. about the Invitational, man? Uh, how, how was that experience for you? Uh, it was a roller coaster, mm-hmm. um, roller coaster of emotions. Um, uh, how do I, you know, it wasn't just the the jazzy the jazzy finals in in and of itself, but you know, it was also the the whole build up with the Frankie match. You know, Frankie is somebody that I've watched. You know play over the years, extremely, extremely strong, just overall third strike player, you know, mad respect to Frankie. Um, you know, when I got the, uh, the invitation for, uh, you know, for Jazzy, it just seemed like it was like the right time. And uh, I knew that there was like no way that like I could go to Jazzy and Frankie was going to be there. And it's like, you know, everybody was like talking about the match. And like at this point, you know, it like it wasn't like even like any like beef between me and Frankie per se. Uh, Frankie per se. Like, you know, I've always had like m- like mad respect for Frankie, like just to throw that out there. But it was just like kind of like one of those matches that like people like wanted to see. Like it had to happen. So it's like how many times do Frankie and I see each other, you know, like if ever. I think I've seen Frankie one other time in my entire life. So yeah, you know, I was worried about that and you know, just the uh if 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 I'm being honest, you know, like to keep it to keep it 100, you know what I'm saying? Like I know, you know what I'm saying? I know what the narrative was like when I went to Jazzy, you know? Like I had people rooting for me and then I had people rooting against me, you know? And this has kind of just been like a kind of been just like a um what's the word I'm looking for here? just kind of like the the story of like my third strike journey and uh you know it kind of took a toll on me it took a toll on me for a little while just going through all the emotional thinking that oh okay like i know that like people here you know like some people are rooting for me and other people like they want to see like the online like 5k guy they want to see him get knocked out early and you know so just dealing with all that man um but you know i ended up you know i performed you know i was satisfied with my performance at the end of the at the end of the day so you know i'm happy with the results and uh yeah early on especially when ggpo first came out when you think about how the perception of online third strike began uh it's not like it began on a really positive note I only mentioned this because you were talking about how it seems like you were saying the theme of your third strike career is that you were very sort of, I guess, conscious of the people who supported you and the people who were not supportive. Yeah. And yeah. in many ways, it seems as though your journey is sort of parallel to just the journey of third strike. Oh, because yeah. like, there's yep. so many people who kind of think... Oh, you know, Neiman, he's an online player because he mostly plays online. But, like, that's not kind of how you started, you know? And so, I mean, (laughs) 
could you tell know, us man. a little bit about like well first and foremost right like could you tell us a little bit about like how you discovered first discovered third strike <laughs> and, and just those early days of playing it yeah all right so i'm originally from um southern california um that's where i grew up so uh i got into third strike um just randomly <sighs> um so i used to play a lot of counter-strike um back in high school like you know my freshman sophomore year i played a lot of counter-strike you know 1.3 1.4 1.5 um and there was this um like this shopping center in walnut california um i lived five minutes away so that's pretty much like what i did every saturday you know my my, my high school buddies and i you know we would go to this this uh this land center and we'd be there from open to close and you know i was pretty nice i was actually pretty nice at counter-strike like i ain't gonna lie um but it just got to this point when I was playing like so much, like I was playing so much Counter Strike, man. I was getting like, I wasn't saying I was getting bored of it, but I just felt that I was like definitely looking for something, looking for something else. And uh, I would always see this arcade right next door, but I never went inside. I never went inside. And uh, just one day, you know, I had been playing Counter Strike for like five hours straight. Mind you, I'm like 14 or 15, something like that. And uh, I just needed a break. I was like, man, I need a, I need a lunch break or something from Counter-Strike. And I walked in and uh, I see like six or seven guys. They're just like, you know, like everybody's like a couple people on the, on the Dance Dance Revolution machines, a couple guys on the Beat Mania machines, whatever, whatever. And uh, but like, I'm looking at this group of guys and they're on the, they're on like one of those big American cabs. And uh, I just see this guy, he's just running the cab, dude, just whooping everybody's ass. And me, I'm like, all right, well, you know, like, I know how to do a Hadouken, you know what I'm saying? I know how to do a Shoryuken. I know how to use Ryu and this and that. Because, you know, like, I had, like, Super Nintendo and, like, I had played, like, Marvel versus Capcom and, you know, shit like that just here and there at the movie theaters and this and that. And um, he was just knocking everybody off. So, you know, I, I gave it a shot. I... I Went in line and um, he beat the shit out of me, dude. Like I couldn't even like touch the guy, and I was like confused. I, 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 the, I, I that's like what I remember. Like my first feeling, I was just like confusion. I, I, why can I even touch this guy? And uh, this guy that I was playing, um, I don't know. This is a really old school player. His name is uh, Arnell. Um. So yeah, all you all you OGs, you guys know who Arnell Arnell is. Arnell, if you're watching this, what's up, bro? Um, he was playing, I, I believe he was playing, he was either playing Urian or he was playing Dinjin Ryu. I, I forget, but I just kept going, like I kept, he kept like whooping my ass. I kept coming back on the machine. I just wouldn't stop. Like I couldn't like let it go. Right. Cause I'm like, all right, maybe I can't beat him, but I can at least touch him. And, um, I don't know. Like I left the arcade. I went and played some more counter-strike and I, from like that point on, it just like turned into this thing where I started playing less and less Counter Strike and more and more Third Strike, and uh, it just kind of like just fell in love, like you know, love at first sight type of deal. And um, yeah, that was that was the beginnings. And so the arcade that I'm actually talking about was Super Arcade. So the original Super Arcade, not like even when Mike Watson took it over. This was before the Mike Watson ownership. Um, you had guys like Mike Ross, Reset, Calvin, Arnell, um, just like all the guys like that went to like Mount Sac that were like Mar the old Marvel two heads. Um, yeah, those are the days, man. Did you grow up kind of in the San Gabriel area, or you, did you yeah, move you there, from, or, or were you born I, there too? No, nah, I was born in. Uh, I, I I lived in Inglewood for uh -huh. like the first like. I moved to Covina, so pretty much like Covina is mm -hmm. where I'm, where I was raised, pretty yeah. much. But I, I used, I, I'm originally from Inglewood, and then mm -hmm. moved to Covina when I was like seven. Lived there, lived in Covina, you know, up until I was 18, yeah. right? And um, that, you know, Covina is San Gabriel Valley, and uh, literally went to high school five minutes away from Super Arcade. So mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much where I was every day you know, after school, when I got in the third strike.
Yeah. And um, yeah. So the original Super Arcade location, uh, again, is in Walnut, California, and it's, I think, about a mile away from Cal Poly Pomona, which is, you know, a, a really big uh, uh, university uh, out there. Uh, they also had an arcade uh, in the basement uh, that also yeah. had Third Strike, and of course- Really nice arcade, too. Yeah. Really nice arcade. It was really nice, yeah. And of course, I mentioned Cal Poly Pomona because it is sort of important in FGC history. It is the uh, site, uh, not only of, uh, you know, Evo uh, 2003, uh, but also 2004, where the Daigo Perry happened. Um, yep. I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, whether, you know, how, how, you know, how you sort of look back on that. Because it's funny, because, you know, from what you've described, you know, with your story, Neiman, you know, it's like, you didn't seem like you were aware of Evo when you first started playing the game. So... Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting, like this happened kind of in your backyard, 2004, but you weren't really kind of in the scene yet, were you? Like in 2004? No, 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 I wasn't. I, 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 I started, so Arnell whooped my ass first, yeah. right? And then I got intrigued by Third Strike, yeah. and then eventually I like, and, and I, think I, I think I started playing in 05, so I think ah. the Daigo Perry already happened. So, you know, after I'm already getting intrigued with Third Strike, mm -hmm. um, I go on the internet and I look it up and then I see the Daigo Perry. And then I think that was like what sealed it when, like when I saw that, I was like, I like literally went cold turkey on Counter-Strike, stopped playing. And Third Strike has been like the only game since that I've like really invested or dedicated like, you know, time into. I'd like, like to be honest, like I don't really play video games, man. Like I, yeah. I just play, I just play Third Strike, man. You know, um, it's just weird. I'm sure that you're aware of sort of the recent surge in popularity with Third Strike, and there's a lot of talk about the Daigo Perry, and um, even players, even within our scene, you know, sometimes they look at the Daigo Perry a certain way. Um, but I just feel like you can't deny that the, the moment is important, right? Like, like you may not have been aware of it. But maybe the reason why there were so many people at that arcade when you went and you played Arnell for the first time was because everyone heard about the Daigo Perry. And then after Arnell, you know, uh, you know, uh, you played Arnell, you went to the Internet and you saw the Daigo Perry and you just admitted that's what kind of led you to, to Third Strike. And I mean, I don't really understand. Maybe I'm just getting old, but, you know, I just don't really understand like the hate for the for the evil moment i mean i don't know what do, you, what do you think you know okay like this is what like always confused me mm -hmm. that moment is uh, like literally so this some people may argue with this that that's probably the most iconic moment in i don't know competitive gaming history like there's no other like of course there's always like oh shit you know like something crazy happened but i've never seen any type of moment in any game that even comes close to that, right? Like that's literally, I like, how, how would you put that like in a sports term? Is that like, just like hitting like, like a buzzer beater with like 0.1 seconds left in the game championship game or something like that, dude? Like is, nobody had ever seen anything like that. Like, like it, I don't even think that a, that idea occurred in anybody's conscious consciousness to even try something like that, right? It just seemed so unfathomable. And to pull that out, to pull that off, and like under that type of pressure, right, was incredible. And I, I don't understand like why Third Strike over the years, it's like, of course, like you and I know, like we know how great the game is, right? Because, you know, like when you start playing, the more and more you start playing, you, you know that the game is just much deeper than like a Chun-Li parry, right? It's, there's way more shit that's like crazier, but it just seems like Third Strike never, like in terms of like the mass casual market, it never got its just due, even though it's like responsible for the most incredible moment ever, like in, in a video game. And I just never really understood that, you know? Um, yeah. And so when did you start? Because, um, uh, you know, you're coming from, from, from Counter-Strike, and um, I assume that, you know, while you were playing Counter-Strike, you were aware that there were tournaments, competitions going on for, for, for the game. Um, but 
you know, when you discovered Third Strike, uh, what was your familiarity? Because you had said, right, you had Street Fighter for the Super Nintendo, but did you have any kind of knowledge, prior knowledge of the FGC or, you know, because you had said that after you played the game, you looked up the game on Google and then you found, you know, the, the, the evil moment 37. Mm. But, you know, did you have any kind of prior knowledge that, hey, there is something like an FGC or that there are tournaments for yeah. Street Fighter? Like I said, mm -hmm. like I said, dude, I'm from Covina, California. Okay, so, all right. So when I was like, okay, so mind you, I told you I was playing Counter-Strike when I was like, like 14, 15, right? But before that, I used to, my mom used to drop me off at the West Covina Mall. And for those, yeah. who, for those that don't know, there was another iconic arcade inside of that mall which was called tilt arcade so mind you at this time i'm like 12 13 and um i would go there to play marvel versus capcom 2 but dude like i was so trash right that you know like there will be guys playing marvel 2 there and uh you know there will be big crowds there sometime and like there will be people there that were just like really good and like i like this I, I don't even think like like all like the magneto stuff had been figured out yet i think this was like before that um so you know they were using teams like cami and like cami teams and i saw like a couple of like Iceman teams and shit like that but they were like really good and um i'm 12 at this time so you know i'm just kind of like oh you know like these guys are so cool you know and um and then every now and then i would see people like playing like like tekken 3 tekken tag um yeah so i mean like i knew i knew that there were people out there that were really good i just like wasn't aware of like there was like an actual like huge tournament for this type of stuff i thought it was just you know just something that like a, a group of guys got together and and did every now and then you know it wasn't something that i was like aware of like oh there's like an evo or there's like a b5 or something like that you know yeah again that sounds uh you know a lot like again it sounds like we have a lot in common in terms of kind of our experience growing up in SoCal because, yeah. you know, like I mentioned before, I grew up, you know, most of my life in my childhood in Monterey Park mm -hmm. and back in the day, and I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the eighties and the nineties. Um, just, and again, I don't need to tell you this, but it's just <laughs> video games were everywhere, man. In the San Gabriel yeah. Valley, they were just everywhere, whether yep. they were arcades yep. Or redemption centers, or you know, uh, uh, machines at bowling alleys, or movie theaters. Uh, yeah, or convenience stores, movie theaters, Everywhere. malls, actual arcades. Um, mm -hmm. I remember uh, I used to move around a lot when I was uh, a kid. Um, but interestingly enough, we kept moving around in different places in Monterey Park, and you know how small Monterey Park is. And mm -hmm. I remember when I was growing up, like basically between the ages of like six and like 17 you know i lived in like five different places in monterey right. park alone wow. um and so the last place that we lived in monterey park was uh, over uh, on atlantic um up on a hill uh and it was right down the hill from uh this arcade uh one of the arcades that always sticks out in my mind when i think about growing up in, in socal and that is an <laughs> arcade called pirate's cove I don't know if you've ever heard mm -hmm. of uh, an arcade called mm -hmm. Pirates Cove. Uh, no, is, that, I have heard. Whoa, yeah, wow. this is definitely before nope. your time. Uh, I talked a little bit about it uh, with Watson uh, in our okay. podcast, uh, but I recently Googled uh, a, 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 a Pirates Cove. I was just curious because, you know, you were talking about nostalgia. And you yeah. know, inevitably, as we get older, you know, we start thinking about the past and stuff. And uh, I actually found uh, a photograph someone uploaded of uh, of, a, of a Pirates Cove token, and oh. uh, I was thinking cool. it would be cool if you know we could collect all of the different like yeah, tokens yeah, yeah. Yeah. where yeah, like that would be Third sick. Strike yep. was really like yep. popping at, at those yep. arcades, yep. and just maybe kind of I don't know maybe I don't know put them on a display or something or I don't know that would be cool. Yeah, wait now 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 I'm. Now I forget. Did Super Arcade use tokens originally, or did they use quarters? No, they. I think they used quarters at first. I'm pretty sure they yeah, used quarters they at first. They used quarters. Yeah, they used quarters. They used quarters. Shit. Yeah. Fuck. Why am I thinking they, they used tokens now? Or did they? 
I don't. I don't know. Somebody, fa- somebody, fact check that, please. Yeah, we like, need to. We need to. Do- I, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they were quarters, though. Yeah. Like family because, used quarters, right? Fa- family fun definitely used. Family quarters, fun right? used quarters. You know the funny okay. thing about the token thing, like I don't know what it was, but like, at least for 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 me growing up, like if a spot took tokens, then it almost kind of had like a stigma to it. You know, like you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the real yep. arcades took. Yep. Quarters. Yep, yep, yep. You know? <laughs> I remember that. Yep. I, I kind of, I kind of had that same feeling as well. Right. Um, I, I, you, I mean, it's not based. Ahead, it may ahead. not be based on fact or anything, but there was always that feeling, right? You know what? I always hated. I hated like, like I remember. I would sometimes like I would like look in my wallet and like you know you go in a coin, you try to like organize your wallet, and then like you go in a coin part and you dump it out, and there's just like all these tokens from yes. like all these different places, and I'm just like, fuck, man, I just rather have like quarters in here, you know, like. I don't know. It's just kind of like that's something that's always like irritating me a little bit, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But I don't know. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned that because it's like you and I we're products of Southern California, so yep. that sounds like that. That sounds like that sounds really strange coming maybe for some from someone hearing this that's not from California. That's not that does that's never known what it was like to have an arcade scene because again, our, you know, the time that we were getting into Third Strike. Um, you know, arcades were struggling and they were, you know, pretty much on their last days when, you know, you and I got into the game competitively because we got in the game competitively around the same time. Um, yeah. You know, I got in around 2003, 2004, mm-hmm. and then you got in shortly thereafter. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, it, it's funny because when I think back on those days, Neiman, like the one thing that sticks out on my mind is like, like it wasn't even a question of did we have an arcade to go to and of course you know nowadays right that's that's the problem we just kind of talked about that earlier in the podcast right like these and that's why it's so important that you know we really try to support our our venues yeah uh, especially yeah. the scenes oh, that yeah. have supported third strike have supported jazzy yeah. supported arcade culture but man i remember back in the day we used to get into fights like <laughs> Like, like we had, we couldn't even decide. Like you're, like I remember, like some nights, me and my friends, we ended up just not going anywhere because we couldn't yeah. decide what arcade to go to. Okay, L- let's 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 count them. All right, Camelot. So like, like I, I like going to Camelot. 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 Wow. Mad close. Camelot. Oh I like going God, to Camelot because it was mad close. So wow, dude, I remember that one in the ages. Okay, all right. So and let's, you know, if okay, you don't got- live in the valley, right, you're only going to family on the weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, no, dude, that, 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 that was me. Right. So essentially like my schedule was right. I would be at super art. So like on, on school days, right. During high school, every day after school, I was at super arcade right now, Fridays and Saturdays were a little different because, you know, five, you know, five or six miles down the way from super arcade, there was AI arcade infinity, which was another great plaza great food it was always popping popping there on friday nights it was just always something to do there right so friday nights was arcade infinity and then saturday nights it was either ai like like for me right since since i lived in san gabriel valley family fun like was like probably like a 45 minute to an hour drive from me so i was really only going to family if there was like a tournament or like some type of rambat or something like that, right? So if there wasn't if there wasn't anything going on, I would either be at AI on Saturdays or I would go to James Games, which was in Upland, California. That was like, you know, a fifteen a fifteen minute drive. So so already we got Camelot, Arcade Infinity, Super Arcade, James Games, right? You go you go an hour, you got Family Fun. Oh, we had Cal Poly. Damn, that's six. Mm-hmm. What else am I missing? What else am I missing? How about the UCLA uh, arcade? The, the UCLA I had never an went there. I, I, UCLA I, I, had an arcade. I, yeah, they 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 had an arcade. I never went there. I always wanted to always wanted to check it out. UCLA Japan arcade. Sometimes they Japan went there. arcade. Japan arcade. LA, um, yeah. That's like eight, and then Dingen came a little bit late. That's nine yeah. arcades. And then interface in interface a little bit interface further. Ten. <laughs> that's ten arcades. <laughs> we just. And I'm sure. And I'm sure we've missed. A, a, and this yeah. is a, and this is after Southern Hills closed, right? Yeah. This just, is after yep, yep. Su- Southern Hills Golfland closed. Then you yep. know. Then, then if for people a little deeper in Orange County, you know, we had the the Zot Zone at UCI. Then of course yep. out in Riverside. 
uh, which is actually I think oh. where Arnell is from, right around the, the Riverside area, or because I remember because you had mentioned Arnell, right? And and it's yep. funny because uh, I distinctly remember I went out there for a tournament. Um, it was like at like a swap meet. <laughs> It was like, oh, no, I, I know that place. I, I know that yeah. place. Yeah. 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 Yep. That, a, a, lot of, a lot of Marvel players used to go to that swap meet to play. Yeah. Dude, there was like a lot of like, m- like historic money matches that went down there. So I got a second at a tournament there. Nice. Wow. And, and, Dude. And, and I lost to Amir, but like, this was like, a, I, I probably at the time, this was around 2005, but like, I, I was even shocked at how well I did. I was able, you know, to beat. Uh, I was able to beat Watson. Um, I distinctly remember playing Arnell there. Um, you know, I, 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 I you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't beat Amir. I mean, Necro Chun. What are you gonna do? Especially in yeah. 2005 <laughs> when I didn't know anything. <laughs> so especially, and especially against Amir. That's just like yeah, a right? whole Another like, like that's a whole another like like issue. You, you know, gotta get through, you know, this guy's getting yep. top three in every game at the SWAT meet, and you know, I'm yep. just another victim, right? I'm just another yep. notch in his belt. So. Um, Dude, what you a know. reign of terror that he went on during during his time. During know? that period, yeah. right? People oh don't understand gosh, how dominant dude. Amir was. There was a point <laughs> oh where like it almost God. felt like Amir was like cuz remember Amir wasn't really messing with third strike initially. But yep, then yep. when he realized, you know, kind of and this is kind of similar to kind of, you know, your story, right? Neiman like you got into third strike because of that competitive uh, you know, cuz cuz of that competitiveness. You know, you yep. got on the cab, Arnell, you know, whooped your ass, you said, and, and it made you want to get better. And and yeah. I feel like, because I was kind of there pretty much during the entire time that Amir was was really playing really, uh, really well in the Family Fun Radbats. And he went from, you know, I remember 2004. That was the first, um, I'm pretty sure that was the first third strike that Amir competed competed in at Evo 2004. That was the year of the Evil Perry. Uh, that was my mm-hmm. first uh, 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 third strike uh, uh, tournament, or my first third strike at Evo uh, 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, I distinctly remember while we were in the tournament, and uh, <laughs> I was standing with Amir and Shogo, and Amir was like. You know how do you how do you super jump cancel close standing roundhouse into super? <laughs> wow, dude, that's insane. Two thousand four, like, okay, Evo two thousand four. Wow. This he, he doesn't even know how to do those things. And, and then, then just a year to later, think about, he just, yeah. And then he remember one. Demon. And then remember for like a month or like two weeks, he just decided, you know what, I'm gonna use Denjin Ryu. Yeah, remember when he just decided he, he was going to yep. win a Rambat with Dungeon Ryu? I, yep, I, yep. I, I actually watched that Rambat like a couple of months ago. Um, dude, like he's, you know, like I've always wondered that. Like I've always, that's something that's always been something like just to get kind of like, I don't know, into the philosophical side of it, right? Like I've, I've never really understood like how some people get or get good or like develop an understanding of certain things. Like, like, you know, I feel like we, we all go through our own journeys, right? And the things that make us go, oh, you know, like how come it happens like really fast for some people and it happens like really slow for some people, you know? Like I don't really understand how that works, you know? Um, but it just seemed like Amir, dude, like when he got on his streak or like when he got on his tear, dude, he was fucking invincible, you know? And you couldn't touch him, you know, like I remember, you know, Pyro Lee is always going to be like on Hall of Fame, you know, not the Hall, the Mount Rushmore, right, of American Third Strike. And like, I remember like Pyro Lee just was just, it was just kind of like known, like he always had that spot. But then like Amir came through and was just crushing on everything, man. And like, it was just like weird, dude, because I remember like, you know, like at the time, dude, like, we all looked up to Pyro Lee and Five Star and Ken I and, you know, these giants of Third Strike. And, like, we're just, like, little ants, like, in a way, you know? Like, just, just for lack of a better term, we're all, all, like, trying to, like, you know, put on that size and get to that level. And it just seemed, like, so... The task just seemed so monumental 
you know? And um, I just never understood how, like, people were able to, like, understand or just develop, like, that type of knowledge and awareness so early in the game. A at least for me, you know, I felt like my, my understanding and awareness kind of took, it was like a very long road, you know? And it's not to say that, like, I know everything that there is to know about Thirst Strike. Definitely not, you know? But I'm at least, like, a lot more conscious and aware of just, you know, rules of engagement and whatnot now. But fuck, man, like, why did it take me, like, 16 years, you know, as opposed to those guys, you know, they seem like they had this shit down in, like, two years, three years, you know, maybe less. Who knows? I just, it's something that I, like, always, I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's, I, I guess that brings me to kind of, you know, my next question, uh, uh, Neiman. You know, you already kind of started the discussion uh, on it, but, I mean, how did you, what was that process like for you? Uh, how did you go about learning the game and getting better? Um, you know, we can even start from the very beginning, right? Like, like you said, you, you, you actually did start from the very beginning. The very first thing you did, really, right, in your journey to get better at Third Strike was google thirst strike <laughs> you were yeah. saying earlier you googled it that's yeah. kind of the, the first step you know what i mean but like <laughs> so we don't have to start that early but you know like like what what like what are what, what did you do to try to you know get better like you said you played a lot at, at, at super but like were there things that you were consciously trying to do um because again you're getting into the game in 2005 and not 2015 so, I mean, I think viewers, especially newer players, need to understand that, you know, we're talking about, like, YouTube didn't even exist yet when you got into Thirst Strike. Combovideos.com, baby. Okay. So, you can .com. So, 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 can you just kind of speak on kind of how you kind of went about learning the game? And, you know, like you said, right? Like, you know, it felt like other people got it quickly or, or got it quicker than others. But, like, you know, how did you go about doing that? Um... Well, initially, I mean, it's when I first started playing, you know, nobody really played console 3S. Um, I was pretty much practically playing Third Strike only in arcades, right? So I'm still in high school at this point. And, um, I, you know, I was, I was a new, you know, uh, you go to the arcades and some people at Super Arcade I could hang with, and, you know, some I couldn't, you know. Go to Family Fun, you know, where, where, the, you know, where a lot of the heavyweights are, and you try to play on the, you know, the, the big boy cab, and it's either, you know, Five Star on there, or Pyro Lee on there, or Amir, or Kenai, and, you know, it's four guys on one side, or three guys on one side, and it's fucking 30 guys on the other side, right? And you wait, you, you get a turn every fucking 30, 45 minutes, right? Just to get, just to get fucking beat up. You know, you get beat up 45 seconds, get to the back of the line. You got to wait a whole nother hour to play again. Um, so, you know, now that I look back on it, it, it kind of does make me um, gauge the pros and the cons of offline versus online. Right. And in my mind, right, cab, arcade, third strike is always going to be the gold standard. Always. Right. But I think that online over the years, I mean, now it's starting to, you know, that that mindset is starting to change. But I don't think people were really aware of just how powerful online third strike really was. I, I thought like it never really got like a fair shake. And, you know. Um, I started playing, you know, I started playing in arcades and then I ended up moving to Northern California for school, um, which is where, you know, this is, this is my home now, you know, um, I live in Northern California. So when I went to college, you know, naturally I started playing in the Northern California arcade. So I went from playing pyro, you know, the big boys in SoCal pyro, you know, five star, all those guys to playing Enfy, you know, John Choi, Ricky Ortiz, a, a whole nother set of heavyweights in Northern California. So I was playing at Sunnyvale Golfland, Milpitas Golfland, 
and uh, Keystone. So that's where my next phase of my third strike journey led me to. But even with that, I noticed that like over the kind of like the years, people were still playing Street Fighter, right? You know, Street Fighter 4 had just come out. So that was like the new hype. But I noticed at least in NorCal, right? The hype and the passion for Third Strike was dwindling. And uh, just so happened, I found out about this thing, you know, GGPO. I was still in college. And uh, I just kind of started playing on that. You know, it wasn't like, I didn't really like have, I didn't really have like any like feelings for or against it. I just saw it as like a new way you know, like the, the fire within the, th the, fi the third strike fire was still in me, right? Like it was still burning, like really, really strong. But like, it just seemed that like, you know, like when I first moved to college, I didn't have my car here. And, uh, you know, where I live, you know, like I lived like 45 minutes away from like the closest arcade. So I wasn't really able to like go out to like arcades as much as I wanted to. And with GGPO, it was just so convenient. It was like so convenient. Now, granted, like, was it like the best experience? Of course not, you know, but it's just something that I learned to like deal with, something that I learned to adapt to. Now, what, what I will always say now that online has over offline is you get, you're, you're, you're able to get way more reps in, you know, and you're able to get reps in whenever you want, right? You, you don't have to like get up and you know drive somewhere and then hopefully like people are there or like call people and you know hope coordinate hopefully everybody can make it out no you just hop on and you see who's online and then you can play those people all day if you wanted to you can just do straight brute force drilling over and over and over right which is how i feel like i learned you know like i've I, i've never really been a person to like study and like study frame data and like lab certain shit Dude, like I've learned everything I've learned in Third Strike just off of sheer experience, just trying shit out, you know, uh, making realizations. Oh, I keep doing this. You know, like sometimes we're not even conscious of like, like our bad habits, you know? So it just took me just getting knocked in the head. Just, just, you know, I remember, dude, I remember when Cruz first stepped on the scene in GGPO, just fucking just busting me up, dude, just beating me all up and down the screen. And, uh, you know, just over and over and over. And I, I played him for years until I finally really started kind of like starting to understand how to fight Urian, like what to do versus what not to do. The, the, the rules, like, like what I've kind of taken from online is that the rules of engagement are universal, right? Now, there is a difference between offline and online third strike, for sure. Like I've, I've never even like made... I, like I've never even tried to like say that like oh they're, they're the same that they're not you know like there's a different timing but it does not mean that the rules of engagement don't apply what people really must understand is that you have to calibrate yourself for either platform right once you're calibrated those rules those rules are exactly the same and um yeah, I, I like just just to kind of give like an analogy. I was taught I forgot who 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 like who mentioned this, but it was actually like a really good analogy, right? Like uh, this guy, he was saying that like you know it's kind of like when you play tennis, you know, there's like different floors, right? So like you don't want to like practice all day on like a clay floor and then you go to like Wimbledon and it's like on grass, right? You know, it's like it's gonna be different. Like the the p amount of power that you have to hit for the shot that you want. You know, like your timing's gonna be a little bit different, but it doesn't mean that like, oh, like you can't still do like the same type of engagements or like the same tricks or, you know, mind fucks or like, you know, all that, like the neutral is still the same, but you know, you must just make sure that you play on the correct platform. So I, I know I'm kind of just going all over the place, but that's kind of like how I learned Third Strike is, you know, I was born in an arcade and I think I was, Online is what made me strong, you know, um, just getting just over the years, you know, like just think about how many great players have played online over the years, you know, um, metric, 
you know, AC Slayer, Exodus, Nika KO, you know, like Ten Ren, Cruz, Arcs are like, like, dude, like, there's so many, uh, and, and, I, and I'm, there's, a, there's so many people, like, that is like what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to, is so many heavyweights and legends that have played, and I just always felt that, like, it never got its just due, because, like, I was actually, I got, I was getting a huge benefit out of it, you know, like, there were times where, I'll give you a story, right, so this is actually, the most i think like this was kind of like the moment where i really started to kind of like become aware of like what i was doing and where i was kind of like reborn in a way and where my style really started to develop so this was my senior year of college right and i had been playing on ggpo or I don't, I don't remember, it might have been GGPO or Fight K1 at this point. I don't really remember. But, you know, I had already, by this time I had been playing Third Strike for five years or six years or something like that. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But I at least thought that I was competent, right? I didn't consider myself to be the best or like some great player, but I thought I was decent, right? I thought I was like, I thought I was, I thought I was I, right? I thought I could at least hang. And uh, I had gotten pretty familiar with most people that were frequenting GGPO. And like, I just remember out of nowhere, you know, I play this, like, who's this new guy? I've never seen this name in the lobby before. This motherfucker picks Ibuki. Bro, when I tell you I got fucked up, I can't even describe it to you, dude. Like, and y'all all know who that was, right? It was Mr. Tenren himself. This guy made me have, over the course of like a year and or a year and a half, this guy made me have so many fucking mental breakdowns. I, I can't even describe it. I could not touch this guy, right? And the whole time, it started getting to a point where like, I thought that I was just like stupid. You know, like I thought that I was just like, just inherently dumb, you know, and I couldn't like, like I had reached my limit and like, I would never be able to beat or compete with this guy. Cause I mean, the ass whoopings were just so bad. And, um, dude, like imagine too, like, you know, like I had just started dating my wife at this time. So like, we're like hanging out and stuff a lot, but I'm still playing third strike, right? Like I'm, I'm still loving third strike. And so imagine dude, like you just start dating a girl in college and y'all go out and have a good time or whatever. You come home and like, oh, let me play a couple games right quick. And I fucking play Tenran and she just sees me like fucking flip out, dude. Like, and she doesn't really understand, right? But, you know, must, shout outs to my wife. I love you, baby. She's like supporting me a lot with this game. But um, I just remember, dude, like it got to this point where I just thought like I was never going to get any better. And I thought like I was never going to be able to like overcome this behemoth of a player in Tenren. And dude, like I don't, to this day, I don't understand how this works. Dude, I remember he whooped my ass, right? And like, it's still, it's still so like clear. I, dude, I put my hands down and like, I just felt so defeated, right? And boom, dude, the fucking epiphany just hit me. And it was like a weird ass thought. I was just like, it's your, I like, I, I, this thought came in my head. It was like, it's your fault you got hit. I, I swear, dude. And like, from that point on, it was like a seed had been planted. And I just kind of started developing that seed. Now, like, what I'm not saying is that, like, when I had that thought that, like, I just turned into fucking Neo, it's like, fucking stopping bullets with my hand and shit. Like, but it was more so how I just became aware of like how engagement worked, right? And I think, I think that's what kind of made me like, I guess a lot of people like to classify me as like a very defensive player. Like maybe it was that, like maybe, maybe 10 Ren is like responsible for that, right? Where he's such a, like an aggressive and offensive player that there was like a evolution, you know, just like, you know, after, 
there was so much pressure being placed on me where I just had like, it was kind of like the counter reaction where I developed like as a offensive as he was, I, I became like equally like as defensive. And um, I started seeing results, dude. Like I started like understanding the game and a new light and um, you know, it started working and uh, yeah, that's, that's more or less like the story. I mean, like we can get more in depth if you want, but that was kind of like the real realization of, all right, of my development in, in third strike. So uh, I just want to comment on, on something that you uh, said earlier, uh, Neiman, yeah. you know, when you uh, talked about how you went from family fun and you were playing uh, Titans of our game, like five star yep. and Iro and can I, the list goes on and on. Then you went to NorCal and you got to play with the likes of Ricky, Emphy, Rom. Uh, and then later in the Keystone era, I know that you had players like Bisu. Uh, and uh, I know that Cookie was there for a little while. Mm -hmm. even, even in the dark ages and even in the, even in the tough times, I was watching the third strike. <laughs> and, uh, and then you talked about going to fight Cade and you talked about, you know, meeting players like Exo and Nika and AC Slayer and Arxer. And when I kind of listen to your story, Neiman, like, number one, I think, like, that tennis analogy is really good. But, like, the analogy that I kind of like better is that, you know, again, um, for those of you who, who watch sports, in professional sports, there's always the game. And then there's always how players prepare for the game. And so, you, you know, you, you started out your story, Neiman, talking about, you know, the one benefit of fight Kate is reps. Um, but that kind of presupposes what, you know, you had already mentioned, right? That, that offline third strike is the gold standard. Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically what you're proposing is that fight Kate is a good place to learn the game, to practice, to get reps, but you know, but, and it sounds really simple and everything, right? Mm -hmm. But, but, but that's all based on the assumption that we all agree that offline third strike is what is, is the pinnacle, right? Because, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, you know, analogy that I like to, to think about, right? And again, this is assuming that we all agree that third strike, it doesn't even have to be a jazzy thing. It could just be an offline third strike tournament is mm -hmm. the game. Okay. That is where you make your, kind of mark right mm -hmm. um i don't want to say that's where it matters because then you know you then you assume oh does that mean online doesn't matter but yeah. you know but yeah. but you know you yourself said right offline is the gold standard right sure yep but like you know and it sounds so easy you know but you know why why hasn't you know, it really been that way in terms of because, like you said yourself, right? You don't feel like online third strike has gotten its 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 just due, and you kind of explained, you know, the benefits of online third strike. Um, because to me, like the better analogy would be like pro players they have practice, right? Mm. And they have the game, you know. But then, yep, yep. But then the, the the problem is there, right? Is that so what are you trying to say? Like kids just practice or online third strikes? Sure. Just a game? Sure. Like what if, what sure. about the players that don't have the luxury to play offline or maybe sure. is it just our, maybe it's our obligation, right? Like you, like you had said, you and I are, 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 are long time uh, students of the game. We love the game. We learn the game the way it was meant to be played. Right. That's not even like an argument or a claim. That's just fact. Sure. You know, it was designed sure. to be played in a certain way. Like, if that's important to you and me, right, if that's important to us, then, like, isn't it up to us then to kind of, you know, kind of encourage even new players to be like, hey, you know, there is, you can play, like, the game is really great offline. Like, it's great online, but it's just amazing but it's offline. Great. Sure, sure. I, I guess that's what I, I'm I saying, get, right? 
I don't know if you okay. understand where I'm getting at here. Like, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. I think, yeah. Okay. So I'll say this, right? It's really easy for us, right? Well, you and I, we both grew up in Southern California, yeah. right? We just named 10 arcades. Yeah, exactly. Where we just named 10 arcades that we had access to, right? But let's take a player like Lance, who grew up in Alaska, right? And it was just him and one other player, right? There was no scene, mm -hmm. per se. So it, it definitely becomes, the waters become a little bit more murky when you talk about the cab experience, right? Like if you have, if you, if you have that available to you or you have the means or the resources to access that, by all means, take, take full advantage of that, right? But for other areas, you know, if you live in, you know, butt fuck nowhere where there is no third strike, then it's like, I don't want to shit on their experience either. And, and I guess like the analogy, like, like when I was making that analogy, offline and online mm -hmm. i was more so talking about like the physical experience of it right like mm -hmm. where online is faster the timing the timing and the speed of the game online it's it's a lot slower on 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 cab right and there is like a um there's a you know a calibration process that you have to go through like 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 for me right i'm of the mindset now of you know I, 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 put, I place great weight on cab tournaments, but I place great weight on large online events as well. I, now, honestly, if we're talking about, all right, well, would you rather have a, a huge offline tournament or a huge online tournament? I mean, I think it goes without saying that like the who's who of, of the third strike community plays at Jazzy in the American, you know what I'm saying, in, the, in, in, in America. Like, that's that's not even to be debated, but it doesn't mean that like you know some other big online event you know can't hold weight, right? And I think that I think that's kind of like that's more or less like was kind of like the issue with me where you know I started kind of like really making a name, online, but I kind of had lost that offline presence just due to the nature of online being convenient, due to you know, just my personal life at the time, not really being able to travel in arcades. And not only that, like Third Strike kind of, like the offline presence kind of dying here in Northern California. So it was just like, I just naturally made that, you know, just naturally just started to gravitate more toward online because I felt like I didn't have a choice just due to my circumstance, right? It doesn't mean that like I willingly gave it up or I wanted to give it up, right? But there's a whole group of people who didn't have to experience that and who would never play online. So, you know, they would always shun it. And, and of course, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, like online hasn't had its, its downsides or its struggles, right? I mean, just off top, you got to have a decent computer, right? A decent monitor, a decent connection. You really should only be playing people that you have decent, like, like, like all this, all this online talk is, is assuming that, the connection between you and your opponent is decent, right? Like, well, I, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not even really talking about cross-country connections. I'm talking about people that you got 50, 60 ping with maximum, right? And that was, like, always my argument. I'm like, I really don't see this, or they're not trying to see it. And, you know, I felt I was getting stronger. And, um, yeah, but, I mean, just back to what you said, yeah, I definitely think that, there should always be an effort to, to promote, you know, the arcade experience, um, the cab experience for third strike, because that is the gold standard. I just don't know how we do that in this day and age in the sense of making it available to like the masses. I mean, like everything, there are no arcades now, you know, like there's, there are only communities, small communities that are, you know, placed here and there. Um, so yeah, I don't know how, you know, it's like, I guess the way to promote offline third strike is through online, right? Like, I mean, Twitch and Fight K2, in a sense, have been huge marketing tools for promoting offline third strike for, 
you know, excuse me if I'm if I'm being too forward with this. Maybe this is my place to say it, but even to promote Jazzy Circuit, right? Like, look, how many people do you think have even found out from Jazzy through through a Twitch channel or from people talking about it in Discord or the Fight Kate lobbies? You know, people talking all that drama, all their shit. You know, like it's so so it's it's a tool. You know, at the end of the day, it's just a tool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I I'm I'm right with you there because think about all the names you mentioned, right? To me, it doesn't seem to matter whether it's offline or online. It really matters who you grind with. I could practice in the most advanced basketball facility ever created. And if I don't have anyone good to play with or practice with at that facility, yeah, then I don't know how it's going to necessarily make me better. I'm not saying you can't, right? But like, when I think about your story, man, it's like... <laughs> just think about I'm just thinking about the names that you just mentioned like it don't matter whether they were offline or online they're all amazing players they were all dedicated players they all loved the game and they all still bro, love the game and so bro, uh, to me it doesn't matter whether it's offline or online so so yeah uh, so I just just kind of just jog my memory so I remember dude when I first started playing on GGPO the two guys like there were two guys that I played with a lot right I used to play with metric and I used to play with Yuki. So Yuki used to play on GGPO or fuck, was it GGPO or 5K1? I don't remember. But they used to play on, um, they used to play online Third Strike like way back in the beginning as well. Now, as far as like what Yuki is concerned, like I'm not really sure. I mean, I know he moved to Japan and, you know, he fucking went into a hyperbolic time chamber and, uh, fucking became a monster after that you know, i'm not really sure of like what his sentiments are or how sentiments have evolved since going through that experience but you know there's been plenty of players that i've played with that are monsters you know online and offline and so you know like just just seeing that and understanding that but i think more importantly at least at least for me right this is just my opinion I think that like, I think that the biggest takeaway that online has given me is it's giving me a platform to understand engagement. Now that I, I, I don't really know how to like communicate this, but I think this is what, this is what like I found strength in, in terms of like understanding how to play the game. And it's not something that's exclusive to a cab or a computer it's more so just understanding like how to fight you know like how to put people in certain places and understanding like how to like read intentions and knowing you know what when your opponent is scared to press a button or to do something like all this shit dude like the intangibles right it's i've i've learned it i've learned it through through online um online third strike yeah you know and it's you know it's been a rocky road there's been ups and downs but i mean i just got to keep it 100 man you know um yeah there's a phrase that you've been repeating all throughout the podcast uh neiman and that's you know sort of the rules of engagement right mm. like like why is it then when that when you stand a certain distance from an opponent right like, what are their, you know, what are the things they can do? What are the things they can't do? So forth and so on. I don't know if that's kind of what you're referring to when you talk about rules of engagement, um, but just kind of, you know, understanding kind of the parameters and the rules that govern any situation. You yeah, know, that, because, that, that, that perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. That how you, what you just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I always wondered this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you take a real fight, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so look at somebody like Floyd, right? Floyd Mayweather Jr. Like, we're we're not going to talk about like his persona. We're just going to strictly speak his boxing about like his 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 boxing, right? A fight in and of itself is extremely, it's a chaotic situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like if you strip everything away from a real, fight, right? Mm -hmm. You strip the physicalness of it. You strip the the you know the actual combat. Like, what is a fight? It's just decision making. Mm -hmm. My decisions versus your decisions. Okay. Right. That's the base layer of just engagement in, in any in any type of medium. It's decision making. Right. So I've always asked myself, how is it that like Floyd 
can just sit in front of you, mm-hmm. right? And just like he just knows, dude. Like he knows every fucking angle, dude. Like mm-hmm. he knows where to be. He knows where to be. Like I, I seen like in that one fight, there's like a fucking a little a little moment where Canelo throws like a five piece combo and he just goes, it looks like he goes, like it's just like Yeah, a, like on some matrix bro- stuff, right? Like on- dude, and then catch and he'll like catch the last uh-huh. hit. You know, but and most people don't have that. You know, most people when they do this, their hands aren't right here. His hand, he just like he's just aware. Mm-hmm. And so one, he has the knowledge. He knows that well if I stand here and my opponent, like I kind of have my opponent's reach down. You know, he throws a jab and he's option selecting. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll see him, he'll go like that and like you know he'll catch shit and sometimes he'll like you know he'll fall for a faint, but he's always playing neutral. And when he does get into, you know, a bad situation, he, you know, he knows how, he definitely knows how to like EX Tatsu out, right? Mm -hmm. He'll fucking Tatsu out of there. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm more so just talking about how he's like catching punches, how he can parry punches. Um, so yeah, what you said, just like kind of it, like that type of decision-making applies to third strike as well. You know, um, obviously third strike is a much more safer environment. Right. But like, it's the same thing, right? It's like when you start off, when you start off, when that round starts and you're right here, you're right here, right? You have to be aware of what your opponent can do at that given situation. You have to be aware of what he can do if he moves closer to you, if he goes right here and then you move back here. You know, you just have to be prepped for all of that. And at least for me, I just learned that through sheer experience of just playing every day, right? And even then, like, it's weird because, like, I remember... I remember I would be playing like Exodus and Nika a lot. You know, there was a period of time when I was like playing them every day. You know, like I, me and Nika were playing fucking first to 10 sets, three sets a night, you know, like two out of three first to tens. Me and Kane, two out of, you know, two out of three first to 10, sometimes more. And then like I felt Issei, you know, like I felt Issei jump online. And like, you know, I don't know what his thoughts are about online third strike, but man, like, when I felt like when I felt his Yoon, you know, and it's obviously like you guys know how like great players Nika and, and Exodus are. When I felt Issei, dude, like it felt, man, I, I can't, it just felt so different, you know, like I, I felt like I was like, like on a timer, you know, like you got 11 seconds, you know, every, every 11 seconds he's activating. And it's like the way that like he wouldn't like let me in. You know, it's like I'm trying to like get gain entry from different ways and always building meter. I'm trying to come in, fucking smacks me in the face, and now he's reset it and I gotta find another way to get back in. You know, and it's like it's like and it, it felt like that it, and it felt exactly the same on on like when when I played him at Jazzy, it felt exactly the same. It was just as bad, you know, like so there's one sort of popular opinion that I always kind of hear about third strike um and that's you know third strike is more about playing the person than 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 the character i don't know if you've heard that before yeah um, of course but what are your thoughts on that because as i've continued playing this game i find myself thinking more about situations as opposed to like my opponent like how you when you were playing Issei, it almost felt like he knew what to do, like depending on where mm-hmm. you were, he knew how to he knew what the options were, he knew what his options were, but mm-hmm. I, but but I, you know when it gets when it boils down to it, you still have to make a decision, and that's why Thirst Strike mm-hmm. so godlike because you never know if that decision is really the right one until after, um, but like as I've been playing the game, I, I I'm starting to like think more about situations as opposed to like you know oh my character you know my opponent can do this or my opponent can do that over time it's made me kind of reassess that 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 adage and i don't know what do you what are your opinions on sort of that adage that you know third strike is more about playing the 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 player as opposed to the character or the matchup Uh, i guess i think it's uh it's I don't know it's hard to say you know like i i definitely like again like i've never really been like like a like a quote-unquote like textbook you know 
read, read this. And then, you know, like I've always been a learn by doing type of person. So like in, t in terms of like, oh, you learn by you play the matchup. Well, I think it's both. You know, I think mm -hmm. it's both like you, you have to understand the limit each the limitations and the options of your character. But, mm -hmm. you know, the mechanics of third strike allow so much self-expression, right? It allows so much like individual style that you have to learn how to play the player. You have to learn how to play the player as well, you know, and, you know, in tournament settings, two out of three, three out of five, you know, you don't have a lot of time to really like learn no, or you, you only have a very limited amount of Time to to understand your opponent. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's where just like kind of like the intangibles come in of just being able to learn how to adapt and seeing like what makes them tick and kind of seeing what they don't like and you know what they like to do. Um, like me personally, right? Like I know that. Okay, yeah. I, I I'm I've kind of been on this um this new. I feel like my game has started to evolve where you know I was a very defensive player, but now man, I feel like I'm. In to like a, a very aggressive like like a offensive player like especially against like a like chun like it, it's weird you know like now my mindset is i'm like forcing engagements on chun one i'm trying to do as much damage as possible before she gets that first meter but two i feel like you know, if you try to play footsies with Chun, you know, it's funny because like Five Star told me this like a long time ago. Um, he said, I had played Amir in a tournament like at Don's like five years ago and Amir beat me. And then like Yi came up to me and he was like, he was like, yeah, all that dancing and shit, you know, you're doing all that neutral. He's like, that shit don't work on her. And like that just kind of always stuck with me, you know, and um I've just like now, like I kind of see or understand like why he said that, you know. So now I'm in Chun's face, you know what I'm saying? And I'm throwing, and, and you know, I know there's a lot of this is very like polarizing opinion, but I'm of the notion of I like using fireballs against Chun. I think that it does. Why not? It kind of. Bo I mean, when, when, she, when she doesn't have meter, why not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It, it, exactly. And it's like, but not only that, you want to kind of be aggressive and you want to be in her face because well, you want to you want to prevent way, you want to prevent her from controlling space, right? You know, you want her from yeah, controlling the yes. pace of the match. So you got to use that, whatever tools you have necessary to do that. You know? That, but not only that, but another intangible is that when you're putting pressure on, mm -hmm. you're really in a way you are kind of controlling her movements as well. Like, like you can mm -hmm. kind of predict. No, no, I'm not saying you're going to be predicted every time, but you can predict with a much greater um, accuracy rate of like what she's going to be able to do. So you'll be able to, like, you'll be able to catch more parry. You know, you'll be able to catch more of her attacks with a parry, right? You'll be able to dash in more. Now this changes. You, you have, now once she gets that meter, you know, like this mindset changes, and you kind of have to. I mean, you can play it aggressive, but I, you, you may want to be a little bit more cautious, but. You know, it's just stuff like that, you know, like when you're able to do that versus other games where, you know, there is like a, a textbook way or thing that you should do where, OK, you get this person in the corner and then you do this combo or you call this assist and, you know, they're stuck for three frames and you do, and, you know, it's just up and down. And I don't know, man, that shit gets boring after a while for to like to me. And that, I don't know, maybe that's not really why I never really like played. Played any of the games like I like I like the idea of. If I know what you're going to do, or even if I don't know what you're going to do, like even if I want to guess, right? I know Third Strike gets that whole, oh, you're just guessing. It's not just guessing, right? But even if I do guess, like there's always that unpredictability there, right? So it's predictable in the sense of, right, over long periods of time, you know, the stronger the person who should win will win, right? But if we're talking like in the short term, um, you know, like, it allows for more like organic upsets. You know, the parry is 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 a great mechanic. What what you said, you know, I would all co-sign as far as the unpredictability because you understand how exciting the game can be from a spectator standpoint. It seems mm -hmm. like when I first went to family and I went there, 
I, I had a kind of a different reaction, you know, I went in there and my immediate reaction, because, you know, maybe I was, it's because I was a little bit older, but my immediate reaction wasn't, wow, these guys are amazing. I hope one day I could be as good as these guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, that wasn't my first reaction. My first reaction was I went in there as a fan. I went in there yeah. and I was like, damn, like you said, like these players, like I've played this game before, right? In my local yeah. pool hall or my bowling alley or yeah. my convenience yeah. store or my yep. local arcade. And then I went to family and I'm like, dang, like maybe I could parry maybe once or twice a night, <laughs> but like. You can't even press anything against these guys. <laughs> so, like, when I first went to family, my reaction was, like, these are pros, you know, much like yeah. you would go to, like, a professional sports game. So, like, yeah. I was always just a fan first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it was, like, yeah. when I first went to family, I was, like, these guys are really, really good. And I had yeah. absolutely no kind of, like, like, at least at first, I was, like, like there was like, how am I ever going to like you said, right? There's no way I could ever hang with these with these players. No way, no way. No Nuts, way. dude. Yeah, you're right. You just look at them as like the pros, you know. And it's like, yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, I, it'd be cool to get there someday. But it's just something that like, I don't know. I didn't never really like considered it. All right. So I, I've been thinking about this lately, and I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an answer to this. Do you believe in like? free will versus like like do you believe that we have a choice yes okay let me ask you this what's a food that you like versus a food that you hate like tell me the food that you like first and tell me the food that you hate you know uh rice okay you like rice yeah. and what's a food that you what's a food that you hate coconut why do you hate coconuts i just don't like the way it tastes like okay uh, so 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 this this is the point that i'm getting at mm -hmm. I, I hate mushrooms. Oh wow! Right, uh -huh. my wife loves mushrooms. Oh no! Right, yeah, yeah. I, I I can't. I gag. I, I gag. <laughs> I can't. I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, I don't have a choice. Like like it's not something that I'm like consciously trying to like versus dislike. Uh -huh. Right. In the same way, right, where I don't even know if I had a choice in like liking Third Strike because like I've consciously try to like play other like you know like i remember um frankie like in that one jazzy documentary like there's a line that he says and he's like you know third strike is like a great game and like i haven't been able to play like any game with the type of vigor yeah that i play with third strike that like that, that i put in the third strike and like i man like that that shit resonated with me so much like you know i've tried playing street fighter 4 right i've tried playing street fighter 5 i've tried playing other games and i have great respect obviously for these games and for the people that invest and dedicate so much energy and time into it. But I ask myself, why, like, like, how come that fire is not, like, not in me in those games, but in Third Strike, it's been in me for this whole time. You know, it's like when I played, it, it, it was kind of like, like a love at first sight type of deal. You know, I was very intrigued and confused, but man, I like loved it, you know? And it's like, I guess I'm just like trying to understand that and figure that out. Like, why, why do I love this game? Mm -hmm. Right. Why do I hate mushrooms? You know, why do I like this? Like, do I have a choice in this? Like, like, am I just destined to like, 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 is this going to be the only game that I'm really going to like truly and honestly like, and it's not going to be like a chore, you know, like, I hope not. Right. I would love to like, be able to like have, you know, dedication and passion for other games, but it just seems like it hasn't came yet. You know, who knows? Maybe Street Fighter Six might be dope. Mm -hmm. Maybe Project L may be dope. We don't know, but, you know, we'll see. But I guess that's what I'm kind of, like, looking for now is, like, that kind of, like, organic and, like, pure passion that I have, that I've had for so long with Third Strike. And, yeah, I, I, guess, that, like, I guess that's why I'm asking is, like, is this even... I don't, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. But no, I I'm think... just trying to understand, like, why I like the game. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, just kind of got done kind of talking about, um, you know, sort of why you, you love Third Strike so much and, you know, why Third Strike has been able to give you what, another, what other games may not have been able to give you. And so, um, you know, that leads me to kind of my next question, sort of what motivates you at this point in your Third Strike career? Um, you know, what are, you know, what, 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 
what are some of the things that drive you to continue playing this game and becoming better and continuing to be part of this scene? Um, because, you know, I'm sure there are many people that still want to see you play, right? You know, um, uh, and, and so, but for you personally, like, what's motivating you right now? Uh, do you have any goals? Are there certain are there certain things that you still want to experience? Um, you know, what, what's I'm, keeping you in the scene right now? I mean, you know, I've always wanted to play, you know, go to Japan mm -hmm. and play, you know, play against the Japanese in Japan. I've always wanted to, you know, play against the French. You know, I've always wanted to go to France and play against the French. Um, you know, uh, having having one of those nice, you know, jazzy belts on my uh, uh -oh. <laughs> on my wall, dude. That that man, whoever. Oh, okay, I just want to say this: whoever designed that, dude, that belt is so fucking solid, dude. That <laughs> belt looks. Oh my gosh, dude, that belt. The the belt last year. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I wanted it so bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out, shout out to Five Star. You know that that's that's a. Great, that's a great looking belt. So I don't know who did that, but yeah, kudos to them. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to win a Jazzy, you know, just uh, kind of just like prove, you know, prove something to myself. Um, you know, the game's fun, you know, like the, the game is, the game, the game is the game. It's always going to be fun, you know. Um, I would say that those are probably my, my primary motivations, you know, and, and, and like you said, you know, even after we're gone, you know, like keeping, keeping third strike alive, you know, um, I think there's always, I think there's going to come a point in our lives where, you know, maybe we have to put the sticks down. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's a definite, but maybe that might be, you know, I don't know, but I would definitely like to be, you know, 50 or 60 years old and see a, you know, either third strike being still played or some third strike like game being played, you know, like that would be cool. Um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, and I'm not gonna lie. You know, like I'm, I'm, right? Like as much as I love Third Strike, and I, and I play Third Strike, right? Like Third Strike's always gonna have a place in my heart. Um, you know, I would like to maybe move on and like try other, games, right? It's, but you know, as we were kind of talking about a little bit earlier, it's more so just finding that passion and that spark for it. Um, so you know, whether that comes or not, you know, that remains to be seen. But yeah, that's just kind of. Kind of just a couple of points, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, Neiman, uh, uh, t tell yeah. us, uh, yeah, uh, Neiman, tell us a little bit uh, about uh, Money Mondays and how that sort of idea came about. Uh, Get Money Mondays, uh, dude. I don't even know. The thought just came to me. Like, I literally, I wasn't like, I don't really know how I thought of it. Um, you know what? I, you know what? You know what it was? Like, I wanted to kind of put i wanted to kind of like bring people to third strike in a way where i kind of wanted to do something like new and edgy that would like draw more people to third strike right um like you know most of the time and it's not i'm not by like when i'm saying this by all means like i'm not shitting on anybody's stream right but you know most of the time with any game right like like with any with any game on twitch you know it's just people playing and you know, people chatting, right? So I'm playing the game. Everybody's watching me play the game. People are chatting on the side, right? I kind of thought it would be a really cool idea to get people actually involved with, you know, like, you know, it's kind of like a, um, imagine you're going to like a carnival or something, right? You want to play a carnival game, right? Well, those are kind of fun, right? And then I just kind of thought about it a little bit. And, you know, I feel like, it, I feel like if people have the opportunity to, be a part of something and potentially win something with, you know, no risk, then like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, why not give it a shot? You know? And, uh, it seems that it's been working, you know, like I've been getting a lot of people on the stream that are, you know, new to the stream and new to third strike, right. That are like kind of interested, like granted, you know, like the amount of money that you can win, I'm funding this out of my own pocket, right. It's not going to be like some life changing amount of money, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be right. You know, it's get a chance to win. Win five bucks, you know, beat me in a first of three, you know, regardless of if you win or if you lose, it's like, there's no risks. So I just thought it would be something kind of fun to do to bring people together and, you know, put it kind of like a new light, bring more light to. Th and yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, uh, 
how much money have you lost so far? All right. So actually, the <laughs> so the <laughs> so so far, I've only lost twice. Okay. Uh, Baraboomba was the first winner. Uh, I picked twelve. Anybody that uses twelve, I have so much respect and admiration. That character is insane to use. And then Kang was the second person to beat me. So I've only lost twice. And Baraboomba, Baraboomba didn't even want me to pay him because uh, I used twelve. He wanted the run back with Ken, so I gave him the run back. And yeah, so. Yeah, I'll just say that. <laughs> and yeah, uh yeah. so um uh the 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 get money Mondays uh what are some of the like are there any like rules or do you get to choose your own character or what are you know some of the I know it's first to 3 but is there like a queue? How do people sign up? Like how do people uh how do people get a chance to win Neiman's money? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's free. Literally just watch the stream okay. and just throughout the, throughout the whole stream. Um, I just run, a, you know, I run like a raffle usually like you know, those Twitch bots. And, um, when I, when I enable the raffle, you know, everybody has two minutes to enter the raffle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, after that 120 seconds is up, then, you know, the bot randomly selects, uh, somebody that entered the raffle and then that's it. You know, like, the, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm still kind of thinking of like, the show's still new. So I'm kind of still, I, I, I in a way, like, I kind of, I, I have kind of like some ideas. I was like, oh, maybe we can make this to like a game show or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're just ideas for right now. You know, I still have to figure out how to like implement and execute these ideas. But um, so, you know, we're still kind of like in the pilot episodes, so to speak, you know. Um, but yeah, literally just watch the stream. There's multiple raffles throughout the stream. And, you know, when I when I when I open up a raffle, just type in join and you know, if you get picked, then then we run the first of 3, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And um and, and as far as like character selection, there's there's no rules, just, you know, pick whatever you want, you know. There's a uh, just character lock, whatever you pick is just character locked, but you know, I, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting some ideas with that, too, like how I, how I want to, you know, approach the character selection situation. So, you know, it's all kind of a work in progress. It's kind of winging it. Do you allow the players to, you know, because you had said that Baraboomba had asked for the run back with your Ken. Do you let the mm -hmm. do you let the players request your character or or, is this, or do you just pick the character yourself? Um, so, yeah, I just pick the character myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes what I'll do is like I'll throw out like. A couple of characters, I'll be like, okay, all right, chat. Like, I'll use Hugo, Dudley, or Q. Mm -hmm. in, uh, you Today, know, in this right? matchup, and or yeah, like no, or or, or, or yeah. no, just j oh, okay, just for like one of the raffles, just okay. for like one of the raffles. And uh, you know, I'll like like chat, hurry up, who do I pick? Like Hugo, and then you know, just based off of like how many votes there are, or how many people, like I'll pick that. You know, just kind of just trying to like spice it up, make it fun. Um, but yeah, like I, I I've been kind of thinking about that, like how I want to do the character selection process, you know, like maybe I will make it so that I can let, you know, the chat pick my character, you know, I, I, I kind of have to do this in a way as well too, where it's like, I don't want the chat picking fucking 12. Yeah. Every time. You know, against me every time. Right. Like, yeah. so I kind of have to figure this out in a way, but I, I have some ideas and things that I'm thinking about. Well, it sounds really good. Good luck with uh get money Mondays. Neiman again, yeah. you know, Thank for you. me, Whatever puts eyes on the game is like we were saying before, and your experience is a testament to that. You've been playing this game a really long time. You have tried other games, and again, this is not to say that Third Strike is better than any other games, but for of course. people like yourself and me and other players in the scene, uh, this is really why we continue to play the game. Um, uh, again, like you said, you know, being able to compete against the kind of caliber players that you've been able to compete with throughout, you know, your, you know, your, your, your time with the game. Uh, and so, uh, definitely, you know, anything that, that, that pushes the game and really celebrates the game and shows everyone just how beautiful our game is. I think, like mm -hmm. you said, it's just so, so exciting. And, mm -hmm. 
Definitely. Hopefully yeah. we can. Uh, hopefully we will see you uh, in the future uh, in, in more uh, jazzy events. And that kind of leads me to my last question, uh, 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 Neiman. Um, like, how would you want to be remembered as a third strike player? Because you know, I know, you know, we've already kind of talked about like your history and everything, but. And then you were talking about nostalgia and how you've sort of recently been looking back. But, uh, you know, when you think about sort of the legacy that you want to leave as a third strike player, you know, like, like, like what, would, how, what would you want people to remember about you, the third strike player? Um, you know, I would say just somebody that was, you know, able to break boundaries um, and push the limits and understanding of the game um you know i mean of course it would be nice to say oh yeah you know like i want to be this like champion and you know of course like i'm not gonna lie like of course like i would want people to see me in that light too but i think more importantly someone that was able to bring you know a new awareness or a new style or a new light to the you know challenge ideas that were previously unchallenged um yeah just a, a ground shaker, so to speak, I guess, if I, you know, if I have to articulate it or just to put it in short. You certainly did that at the Jazzy finale, Neiman, you know, and, and I know we touched on this already, um, but, you know, and, and it was not easy. You're, you had a lot of really competitive matches and, you know, but you were still able to make it uh, into top three uh, we had talked a little bit about, you know, your set with Frankie, uh, which you, you know, which you won. And, um, yeah, I just hope that you, uh, that you, uh, you know, that we see you in the, in the future in, 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 in Jazzy. I'm not sure which, uh, which events you're, you're thinking of, of, of going to, but, you know, at the very least, I hope to see you uh, at the finale. Yeah, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely going to try to make it. Um, you know, we all have circumstances and you know our IRL stuff going on but I'm definitely going to try to make it you know if there's one that I if anything maybe I can try to make the the last chance qualifier mm-hmm. um but there is a just to clarify there's a last chance qualifier still happening yeah at the uh at okay. the uh, at the okay. jazzy finale it's going to be uh yeah. June 17th through 19th at free play um, yeah. yeah yeah um I so you know if I if I am able to make it I'm that's the one that I'm definitely trying to hit Dude, it was it was a great event, you know, like the the last one, the venue was great. You know, I actually took a road trip um and I actually got to check out uh Free Play Free Play Arlington. Man, that's a that's a great venue for uh for for Jazzy Finals too. So, you know, good shit for good shit for getting that spot, dude. Yeah, I I uh, I'm really looking forward, you know, to 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 that event, uh, especially, you know, Hopefully things uh, will continue the way they're going as far as, you mm-hmm. know, the pandemic is concerned mm-hmm. um, because it was always our intention to make the finale uh, really, you know, as big as possible. Because I know mm-hmm. that players like yourself, you had already talked about, you know, how IRL stuff gets in the way of third strike. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it's always it would it would be nice to know again, like we said, Neiman, even after we're gone. It would be nice to know that every year we can count on something uh, with Third yeah. Strike, whether it's Cooperation mm-hmm. Cup or the Jazzy Finale or, you know, any other, uh, you know, offline events that, 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 that step up and try to keep uh, our game alive. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, thanks for uh, coming on, Neiman. Um, you know, just wanted to give you an opportunity. Is there any, uh, th- anyone you wanted to uh, shout out or... You know, anything, you know, you wanted to say before we uh, the end the podcast? Um, no, I mean, I don't have any, like, particular shout-outs. Uh-huh. You know, just shout-out to, you know, all my, all, my, uh, all my 5K guys, you know, everybody, anybody that I talk to or, you know, we share, we share stories and info with, you know, play games with. You know, I don't need to, like, name people specifically. You guys know who you are. Um, Anything else? I guess uh, I will say this. Um, in a third strike, the last thing I'll say is you must learn 
if there's anything that you that will help you grow in third strike is you must learn to forgive yourself you know in the moment and like learn to forgive yourself in the moment so i don't want to go like too deep on what that means but i think uh I feel like if I start talking about this, we're just gonna like wrench like another thing. Yeah, just uh, play your best. You know, things that you don't understand, just keep at it and learn to forgive yourself, and uh, just keep at it every day, and uh, you will see results. You know, you may not see them today, you may not see them tomorrow. Uh, some the results may come faster for some, may come slower for others. But if you have that desire, if you have that fire, and you keep hacking away at it, you will achieve results. So, yep, that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Neem, for those words of wisdom. Once again, uh, if you're interested in following uh, Neiman's uh, continuing journey to becoming, uh, you know, uh, uh, the best third strike player he can be, definitely follow him on Twitter uh, at WhatUpNeem. And also check out his Twitch, uh, same uh, name, WhatUpNeem. And tune in on uh, Mondays for uh, Get Money Mondays. Take this man's money and maybe learn a thing or two about third strike. There are definitely, uh, you know, there there are, de uh, there are definitely really good players on Fightcade, like Neiman said, and 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 and, and something it doesn't get any better than Neiman. So definitely get a chance to, you know, learn something about the game and you know. And, and again, I, I I like that 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 idea, Neiman, just trying to get more people to try out third strike and, and to play third strike. And so, uh, once again, thanks for coming on the show. You're always welcome back anytime. Hopefully, we will uh, see you uh, in a jazzy event soon. And uh, I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Peace.